Hi, my name is Lestiner Inspires, and I am looking to change the narrative of what trauma and abuse looks like. From shame, silence, and stigma, to support and solutions. From hopelessness and rejection to healing and recovery. How do I plan on doing that? By bringing awareness that the problem that goes with not talking about what you've been through, not addressing it, not only affects that individual, but it affects us as a community. It affects us as a society. Hey y'all, hey y'all, hey y'all, hey y'all. It's Lil Slider Inspires coming at you live with your Teach, Heal, and Lead teaching series and Healing Soul Wound podcast. Woo, woo, woo. Thank you guys for tuning in. No matter what time of the day you're tuning in, no matter where you're tuning in from, I appreciate you. Um, to all my YouTube subscribers, LinkedIn viewers, Facebook, and Healing Soul Wound podcast, whether you're listening on Spotify, um, Amazon Music, Google Podcasts, iTunes, sorry, iTunes, is it iTunes, I think so. Either way, thank you guys for tuning in. You guys are amazing. You guys are great. And I appreciate you. Let me introduce myself for those of you who are new, who don't know me. Welcome, welcome, welcome. My name is The Love Sign Inspires. I'm an award-winning author. I'm a healing and recovery accountability expert speaker as well as coach and workshop facilitator. I am also the owner and lead creative strategist of Rock Your Rebel Creative Collaborative Consulting Company where I help ministries, ministers, and individuals alike who have a vision, who have um, a dream to take the their business, their ideas a step further, and I provide the creative content, the creative design, and the creative strategy to see it happen. And so thank you guys for tuning in. Um, we're gonna we're on our last week, our last week of January, um, and actually the, the last day of January, and the last teaching for the triple A's of forgiveness. And so this entire year, I will be doing um, a 12 month, 12 month, 12 step process um, on living beyond trauma, healing and recovery. And so over the last three, past three weeks, I've been talking about forgiveness. And a few of the recaps is forgiveness is the beginning of your healing journey. There's a, um, a triple A, as I like to call it, by the triple A step process to forgiveness and forgiveness is necessary on your healing journey you cannot start your healing process without forgiveness and so the last part of the triple a's well first of all the first two part of triple a's were acknowledge and accept today we're talking about act and more so taking action and accountability in your healing and so I had posted a question in the event page, just something for you guys to think about, but I'm going to actually say it here as well. Are you holding someone else accountable to your healing? Or are you holding someone else accountable for your healing? Well, what do I mean by that? A lot of times we blame what was done to us and others, the, the individuals who have done things to us whether it was a violation of our um our personal space whether it was a sexual assault we blame them and oftentimes yes what they did was wrong but then we are held hostage to our trauma because we don't know how either we don't know how to move forward or we're unwilling to move forward because we don't want to forgive and I would keep saying this, and I'm going to keep saying this, forgiveness is so necessary, it's so important, and it's like if you don't forgive, unforgiveness is like holding a knife from the sharp end and expecting yourself not to get cut. And a lot of times when we when we encounter any type of abuse, experience any type of trauma, it is definitely detrimental to our well-being. It impacts us. It impacts every part of our lives. It impacts how we view things. It impacts our decision-making. And until we're able to really start our healing journey, it can affect our quality of life. 
And so I want to be here. I'm here to say to encourage you not to hold someone else accountable for your healing. Yes, what they did to you was traumatic. Yes, they their actions are may very well be the reason why you have trauma responses, why you are not willing to be vulnerable and open up. I understand it. I get it. Trust me, I do. But holding on to what was done to you by not forgiving, by not taking the necessary steps in your own accountability of healing is so toxic. Because what it happens is one or two things will happen. You will either turn around and be the person that is the abuser, the one that causes trauma on others. As the saying goes, hurt people hurt other people. And it may not be intentional, but if you're not healing, you you will be operating from a space of a, of a wounded heart, a wounded soul. And so you want to make every effort to move onward and forward into your healing. I want to also give you the definition of action. Action, by definition, is the fact or process of doing something, typically to achieve an aim. So basically, what are your actions leading you to? For instance, if you're walking out the door, you're walking somewhere every action should lead you to somewhere different better greater moving forward even same as goes with your healing journey the healing journey is there is that very much so what it is a healing journey is a process is a process where you need to be very much aware of what you're going through very much um what's the word i want to say accountable and just honest and genuine and so some of the words that are similar to action is effort work and take the initiative take the initiative really is so important because if you don't take the initiative to start your healing journey you'll always be in a, a cycle of repeating certain behaviors, repeating certain things. And your efforts to move forward must be intentional. I posted um, a reel today. It was a little, the quality of the, the video was a little, it wasn't the best, but the message was really important. And basically it says like, well, what I basically said was, you have to be intentional on your healing journey. But you also have to make sure you're not just doing it to be like, yes, look at me. I did. I've overcame what you tried to do to me. You know, because then you're putting on the show, right? Um, healing is something that is that should be personal for you, should be inner in, done inwardly. And for the most part, in the beginning, it should be done privately, meaning you should take this time with yourself and with God and with a therapist to process the things that you have experienced. You should be doing the work on your healing journey consistently on a regular basis. I want to say almost daily. Every day you should be doing something that's going to take you onward and forward in your healing process. There are a few different ways where you can hold yourself accountable. One of them is know that you cannot do this alone. Get help. What does that help look like? A therapist, a coach, a social worker, someone that's in this field that is able to walk you through the process, that's able to provide tools, resources, and support. And then on top of that, having somebody in your life in your personal life that's able to hold you accountable on, on a different level of making sure you attend your appointments, making sure you're doing the the healing work. Another thing you could do to be to, in this at in this action step of being accountable is start today. A lot of times we 
we procrastinate and we postpone certain things that we need to do because one we don't want to it doesn't always feel good and then two it's going to be a lot of work and a lot of times we don't want to do a lot of work but i always give an example of going to the gym right um you can't get the effort of the result of going to the gym whatever the result that you are looking for without actually going to the gym and going to the gym is not always pleasant when you are pushing yourself past your comfort zone when you are working muscles and stuff that you've never used before or didn't even know where you were there it's going to be uncomfortable the same goes with your healing journey the same goes with hope being accountable and taking action in your healing you may find yourself doing things that you really don't feel comfortable with. One of those things may be addressing the fact that the, the, the what happened to you wasn't your fault, but also acknowledging I need to heal from this by forgiving, by forgiving, forgiving the person, the individuals, and the action. And you don't have to, you don't need to be in front of that person to do this. You can take a piece of paper and write it down and be like, this is what happened on such and such day. I forgive them. In your time of prayer, you can be praying, Lord, help me to forgive them. This is important. This is a step that you cannot miss. This is a step you cannot overlook or bypass. Because then your healing will be in vain if you just say, well, I'm going to start healing without forgiveness. You're going to always have triggers and moments where you're going to be just reliving the trauma and so you have to when you're when you're walking this journey of, of wanting to live and wanting to live beyond trauma first of all and wanting to walk on your healing journey remember you have to forgive there's no way around it you have to forgive and sometimes it might be an everyday process you might find yourself every day saying i forgive such and such i forget what happened because you might have a thought you might have more memories for those of us who have had childhood abuse and trauma and it was at the hands of our parents that is the hardest thing to do to forgive a, a parent a parental figure who you first of all you were a child when it was done to you so now you feel like you were violated in the age where you couldn't even defend yourself so that sets up a whole other set of feelings. And then two, is somebody that you trusted and should have taken care of you. How do I know? I'm speaking from experience. I was in my 20s when I forgave my mother. And even from that day that I forgave her, it's still a process where, and I have memories that are, are, are resurfacing. And I have to be like, you know why I forgive her for that? Because she didn't, she did what was under her. I don't try to I don't allow any level of unforgiveness, any level of resentment, anger, bitterness, any anything to stay longer than necessary. If uh if a memory comes up and it causes me hurt or anger, which are healthy emotions when you experience certain things, I allow myself to express like this is how I feel. This is where I'm at. And I go into prayer. I talk to my father, God, be like, I, I, this is how I feel about this. But I don't want it to linger on. This is me taking action in my own life and holding myself accountable to remain on my healing journey. And so no matter where you're at on your healing journey, you're always going to need to be held accountable for your own healing. You cannot expect the people that hurt you to be accountable to your healing. They're the ones that inflicted the pain. They're not going to be. They've done what they've done and they've moved on. And you're still there. Isn't it time to move on yourself and start to live beyond that trauma? And so I want to give you a few knowledge nuggets. The first one, you have to be an active participant in your healing. I mean active, not just passive regret. Not just passively allowing the healing to happen to you it's not like when you're when you cut your skin and we know that you know you, 
you get a cut, if it's not too deep, it's going to start to heal itself. This is not that. When you have experienced soul wounds, when you have experienced trauma and abuse, you have to be actively participating in making sure that you get your healing. Whatever that looks like and whatever stage of your healing process you're at. You cannot just be a passerby on the journey of healing. Because what happens is you risk the chance of falling back into old habits and ways and things that will only just pacify what you feel but never allow for healing. Number two. Healing is your responsibility, not those, not, a, it's not the responsibility of those that hurt you. In a perfect world, it would be fine and dandy if the people who hurt you would also be responsible for your healing. But then in a perfect world, they would never hurt you. So, so then you have to take that responsibility on yourself to say, I want my healing for me. Not to prove to anybody else that I made it, but that I want to live a whole heal beautiful life number three don't wait for an apology or closure to forgive and start healing you might never get that you might never get an apology i never got an apology from my mother and if matter of fact when i went to apologize to ask her forgiveness and to forgive her she passed away like literally like early the next morning if I was to hold up for her to apologize I would probably not be where I'm at right now but my obedience to God at that time in my life where I didn't really know God like I know him now helped me to start my healing journey helped me to process some things and to deal with some things that has allowed me to be who I am now and what I am now which is healed and whole the next point is you don't have to address the person you forgive. Forgiveness is for you and it's between you and God. Matter of fact, you don't have to tell nobody else you forgave this this person for whatever happened in your past. You don't have to I'm sharing with you because this is my testimony to help you. But whoever you're forgiven, you don't have to tell them. You don't have to tell anybody else. This is between you and God. This is your personal action step and accountability step in your healing for your for yourself. Most importantly, I want you to know you need to get help. There's no shame in needing help. Matter of fact, you're stronger for it when you're able to say, I need help. I can't do this on my own. And this, remember, those that are connected to you will reap the benefits of your healing, of your wholeness, and your freedom. You may not see it now, but there's a bright future ahead of you that is so wonderful. But you have to start your healing journey, and it starts with forgiveness. I thank you guys for tuning in. Oh, one last thing. This is something that will help me. And I still remind myself about of it. Be patient with yourself. When you're unpacking the impact of what trauma and abuse has done to you, be patient with yourself. Don't act like someone who just came from vacation. You're just like taking everything out the, the suitcase and like, you know, no. One at a time. Be patient with yourself. As you're unpacking the things that happen to you. Because trauma is like an onion. There's, there's usually layers and layers and layers on top of each other. A lot of times we don't even realize those layers are there. Because we've lived our life pushing stuff down. Dealing with it the best way we can. Not really processing. Not really healing. Not forgiving. Not taking action steps. Not holding ourselves accountable. So, the, the trauma has become packed it and it's layered and just like an onion when you peel it when you cut it open it makes you cry you're gonna experience some cleansing tears some healing tears don't hold back allow the lord 
to work on you. If you don't know the Lord as your Lord and Savior, if you don't know God, if you don't have a personal relationship with Christ Jesus, I would encourage you to, to get to know him for yourself. If it wasn't for my relationship with Christ, I would not be where I'm at now. I would not be able to share my testimonies in the raw, honest way. I would not be able to definitely help or encourage anyone else. Um, and so I thank you guys for tuning in. Once again, don't take your time lightly. Make sure you tell a friend, tell a friend, and share, share, share. Um, until next time, next month, it's a different topic. We will be talking about kicking fear out. If you are subscribed to my newsletter, then you will get all the deets in the email this week. So look out for it. And if you're not, we'll go on my my um, website, www.lasinainspires.com. There's a drop box that will pop open. Put your, your information in there. Or if you scroll all the way down, there's an option to put your information in there in time to get the newsletter that will give you the details for next month's teaching. I love you all and remember to be bold, be unashamed, and most importantly, be healed. Peace out. Trauma and abuse affects everyone and we all have a part to play to change the narrative with love.